Have you ever felt like you didn't belong or you weren't wanted? I remember feeling that way when I was in elementary school. I was at recess at Cedar Creek Elementary School in Austin, Texas. And I was out on the soccer field with a group of boys. And a couple of the popular kids started organizing a pickup game. And they appointed themselves team captains. And they looked at the rest of us and started picking us one at a time to be members of their team. And as time went on, the group that I was with got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I kept hoping and hoping and hoping that I would be picked for a team. It ended up where I was standing there by myself. And one of the team captains looked at me and said, you know, we have an odd number of people here, and it really wouldn't be fair for one team to have more players than the other. So you're just not going to play today. And I remember walking off that field by myself feeling like I didn't belong. I think that's one of the reasons why I've spent so much of my life studying the Bible. Because it's a giant, epic collection of stories that show how God is taking into God's arms everyone. And most particularly, gathering up those folks who are misfits and outcasts and showing them that they're loved and accepted and they have a place of belonging in God's family. We see a story like that in our Old Testament reading. It's a simple story, but it's also pretty complicated, much like life. Well, Abraham one of the Bible's heroes is old, and his family is in chaos. He has two wives at this point, and they profoundly do not like each other. For a long time, Abraham had one wife. Her name was Sarah. And she had trouble conceiving to have children. And in the ancient world, this was an existential danger to the family. Because once people became advanced in years, you didn't have social security or long-term care facilities to rely on. If you became old, you were dependent upon your children to take care of you. If you didn't have children, you had nothing. So Sarah saw that problem. And she had a solution. She said, why don't we get a second woman for Abraham? And then that woman can produce kids for the both of us. And Sarah handpicked that woman. It was their housekeeper, whose name was Hagar. Well, Hagar conceived and had a son. But after that, surprisingly, Sarah had a son of her own. And that created a problem in Sarah's mind. Because Sarah was afraid that Hagar's child would take the place of her own son. That that child would steal a blessing that her own son deserved. And so she went to Abraham and said, send them out. Get them out of here. Abraham thought that was a bad idea, but he went along with it. So he gathered up some food, a jug of water, and gave it to Hagar and her young boy, Ishmael, and kicked them out of the house and let them go out in the arid wilderness by themselves. And as Hagar and Ishmael left their home, not only did they feel the weight 
of emotional rejection by their partner and their parent, but they now had to face a dangerous world all alone. Well, the food ran out, and so did the water. And at that point, Hagar gave up on life. She set her young son in the shade of a bush and went far enough away where she couldn't hear his cries for help. And she wept. And at that moment, at that moment of profound disconnection, of profound vulnerability, God sent a messenger to Hagar that reminded her that God was still with her, working for her good, that God had not abandoned her. The messenger led them to a well of water. And the messenger also gave a blessing to Hagar's son. Well, we read that Hagar's son Ishmael grew up healthy and strong and had a family of his own. It's a powerful story that even when we think all is lost, that we are alone in this world, that God is still with us, caring for us, working for our good. The story tells us something else, too. It reveals that no one is displaced or rejected out of God's household. All are accepted. All are blessed. And God is at work collecting up all the outcasts and misfits and reminding them that they share in blessing also. As people of God, we're invited to join God in that holy work of making sure everyone knows that they are accepted and welcomed and blessed. Sarah believed that Isaac and Ishmael could not live in harmony together. She felt that there wasn't enough blessing to go around. She felt that for her to make sure she got her peace of God's household, someone else had to be displaced. And when God came to Hagar after she was abandoned, in the wilderness, God gave Ishmael the same blessing that Sarah's son Isaac was going to inherit from his father. Isaac was going to inherit the blessing of Abraham, that from Abraham would grow up a nation of people. And that is the same blessing that God gives to Ishmael. God's point in that is that there is enough blessing for everyone. All are blessed in God's household. And if we keep reading the book of Genesis, there are a few other clues that let us know how the story ends. The stories of Ishmael and Isaac do not end in disconnection and discord. When we get to Genesis 25, Abraham is dead, and Ishmael and Isaac come together to bury their father as one. And there are a couple other clues that say somewhere along the way, Isaac and Ishmael reconnected. They joined their families one, together once again. It shows us that God is a God of reconnection. That no matter how much we try to reject people and separate them and cast them out, God is at work putting those connections back together, creating spaces of love and acceptance and blessing. As Christian people, we are to be those agents of reconnection here in this world. To reconnect people to the understanding that God loves them and embraces them. To reconnect them to communities where they belong. 
God blesses everyone. No one is rejected. And everyone has a place in God's household. And God invites us to create space in our own hearts for all the misfits, the outcasts. We've all been there. God invites us to imagine how that feels with all the people that we meet. And in actions of love, bring them in to belonging and acceptance. My friends, this week, how will you be an agent of reconnection? How will you spot the folks you come across who need to be reminded of God's love? And how will you work together to make this church a place of full acceptance and belonging for everyone? Amen.